Hello there fellow acolytes of the Sega Saturn and welcome to another video. This time it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to look specifically at Rockman 8. Now Rockman 8 is kind of a black sheep of the family. A lot of Mega Man fans aren't really too keen on it. But personally, it is the best Mega Man game that I've played. I've not played a lot of Mega Man games. In fact, I'm actually pretty new to the franchise, which if you've listened to my podcast, you'll probably already know. But out of the ones that I've played, Mega Man 8 is definitely a standout. It's just such a beautiful game. Anyway, this is going to be a list of the stages from the series from worst to best. This includes 14 stages, including the intro stage, the, the middling stage, uh, duo, and the Wily Tower split into the four separate sections. Now you can save after each section of the Wily Tower and each one culminates in a boss. So I view them as four separate stages rather than one overall stage. Let's get straight into the list. Okay, coming in at last place in number 14, we have the Wily Tower 4 stage. It's by no means a bad stage, however the level itself is split into two separate parts. The first part is a typical Mega Man boss rush, where you fight all eight bosses from the main game, which the Robot Masters in this game are fantastic and great fun to beat and they're just as much fun to beat the second time round as well. However, because that is pretty much all there is to the stage, it lacks something that a lot of the other stages have. The final boss fight as well, whilst it is an entertaining fight, it kind of culminates a little anticlimactically because the final stage is the floating capsule with a handful of different energy bottle attacks and it takes a little bit of time to whittle the health down. It's by no means a bad fight, the fight itself is still entertaining and the final cutscene is really good and the music itself is really good but for those reasons that's why it ranks at the bottom of my list. Now coming in at number 13 we have Astro Man's stage. Astro Man's stage again it's not particularly bad but it does contain some gimmicks within that I'm not particularly fond of. Uh, the music itself is really good and the design of the stage is quite beautiful. You have these kind of clockwork flowers in the background of the first part and these disappearing platforms. Some of the enemy placement can be a bit iffy and result in either getting knocked back from the platforms or making you not have enough time to cross the platform so it can be a little bit tricky but that's still quite an entertaining part to the level. You also have a maze after that which honestly I kind of get lost doing. The more times I play it I'd start to learn the route a bit more but the maze itself isn't particularly fun. The first time round I just got confused. So it feels like in order to get past it and not hate it, you have to memorise it. And if you memorise it, it's not particularly fun because you're just following uh, your standard pattern. After that, you've got the boss. And honestly, it's my least favourite of the Robot Masters. You have an attack where he circles around and fires these orbs at you. Uh, the orbs themselves aren't amazingly difficult to avoid, but it can be a little bit annoying. And his Astro Crush attack, he has a long invincibility frame and fires down these meteors, which uh, sometimes aren't difficult to avoid, but sometimes if you're in the wrong place, it can be a little bit of a pain. He's not a difficult boss. I mean, none of these bosses are particularly difficult, but he's just annoying more than anything. As I say, it's still not a bad stage and I do enjoy it, however it is the worst of the Robot Master stages for me. Coming in at number 12 is Wily Tower 2. The second Wily Tower stage is not particularly a bad stage, however it does contain one 
gimmick that I'm not a huge fan of, which is the shmup section. Now, thankfully, the shmup sections in Mega Man 8 aren't obnoxious. The main thing I have against uh, shoot 'em ups is normally they rely on bullet hell, and this doesn't have bullet hell. So, thankfully, it's not particularly annoying. It can be a little bit iffy because, you know, it is an on-rail section, so you are limited to the speed at which you're progressing through it. Um, but it is quite enjoyable. The music for the stage is really good, and the boss itself, which is this flying mechanical ship, is quite fun to take out, and I had a, an enjoyable time taking care of it. It wasn't particularly difficult, which kind of surprised me, because it's the Wily Tower. I expected the final boss of this stage to be quite a pain. I was dreading bullet hell for this stage, and it just didn't happen, thankfully. It was a very easy stage in fact, but it was still reasonably enjoyable. Not the most entertaining stage, but I still had a pretty good time with it. For number 11, we have the duo mini stage. A uh, duo stage, there's not really much to it. It's just some very kind of basic corridors. Uh, however, on the Sega Saturn version, it does slightly get a bit more of a bonus because there's a ladder at the start, which is just slightly out of reach, which enables you to get not only an extra bolt, but an extra two bolts if you manage to be the hidden boss. Now, the hidden boss is Cutman. Cutman is from the original Mega Man game, so seeing him here in 32-bit uh, glory and refighting him is quite is quite cool. He's one of the harder bosses in the game because his attacks do more damage to you than any other enemy in the game, I believe. Um, but he also takes a lot of damage, so he's not amazingly difficult to beat. But he can still be tricky if you get hit by him a few times. However, he's still really fun to fight, and it's a nice little bonus, especially since this is an anniversary game too. The duo fight itself is quite entertaining as well. He has got quite an annoying attack with a fair amount of invincibility frames, but it's still pretty, pretty fun to do, and the cutscenes and everything for it are quite entertaining as well. Especially the cutscenes that follow after you beat him. Um, but as I say, the actual main stage, there's not a great deal to it, the reason why this is also quite low down. Coming in at number 10, we have the intro stage. Now, the intro stage isn't the best intro stage in a Mega Man game. However, it's still pretty damn good. I mean, just starting the game, you get these beautiful visuals. This is the first time the Mega Man series came into the 32-bit era, and it really hits you straight away just how beautiful Mega Man can look. It's got these lush landscapes, uh, you have these beautiful looking enemies, particularly the palm trees. The palm trees are a fantastic design, and some of them have like these turrets underneath, and it's really neat looking. You also have a few mechanics that are introduced in the game. For example, the shell creatures, which you get to a point where you instinctively shoot it. You shoot it, rolls down a slope, and destroys all these enemies. Now, that mechanic is, is used in a couple of areas of the game for puzzles and the like. So it's a nice thing to, to basically show to you. Also, there's an underground section. Now, the underground section has some great music. It's very reminiscent of uh, the underground music in Mario. Maybe that was intentional, or maybe it was a coincidence, but as soon as I went into the underground, I thought, yeah, this is good music. Well, as soon as you enter the underground, something that you encounter quite quickly is water. And you reach a point where you can't go any further, and you realise that you can swim in this game, which is something that's new to the Mega Man series. And the swimming controls fantastically. And also, something that's introduced in the main game is a weapon. This weapon is given to you pretty soon in the level, and it's the Mega Ball. It's effectively this uh, football type thing that you kick around. You can use it for certain things like platforming, you can 
jump on top of it. You can kick it to destroy things at an angle. And for you know one boss in the game, it's actually more or less a requirement because of where the boss is located that you have to use it. It's a great weapon and getting it straight off the bat is good fun. You also use it against the boss of the intro stage. It's not a requirement, however, it is the weakness. An obvious weakness, sure, because it's a weapon you've literally just gained, but still, it's pretty good. Now, the boss itself is like this weird mushroom thing. It sort of reminds me of Parasect from the Pokemon games, and it's a really neat little parasitic crab thing that you have to destroy. It's not particularly difficult, but the design of it is really good. It as I said, like with the rest of the level, it's just so damn beautiful and it shows off what Mega Man is capable of in the 32-bit era. So yeah, it's a damn good stage and very worth it uh, being in my top 10. Now coming in at number 9 is probably my first controversial pick and that's Wily Tower Stage 1. Now this is probably one of the stages that a lot of Mega Man 8 players will tell you is one of the worst in the game because it contains a surfing section which is famous for jump jump slide slide and being very difficult. Now personally I find these sections a whole lot of fun. Um, maybe on the PlayStation version and the other versions there's a problem. I know that the Saturn version runs a lot smoother, so maybe things like input delay aren't as much of a problem on the Saturn version as the other versions, which is why it's more tolerable. I'm not entirely sure because I've not played the other versions, but that's the only possibility that I can think of why people hate it so much. For me, it's great fun, it's intense, you have all these things flying at you, and it just gets you on the edge of your seat. Now, the jump jump slide slide thing as well, I can see being quite annoying. However, in the Japanese version, the, the voice for this section is actually quite subtle, and it's played at quite a low volume, so it never really gets on your nerves. Even when I was first playing this stage, and I died quite a few times trying to learn it, uh, it never really annoyed me, the jump jump slide slide thing, because of the voice acting in the Japanese version. Now this is one of the levels where maybe if you're playing the English version, or you're playing the PlayStation version, this would rank a lot lower on your list, and I can completely understand why. However, playing Rockman 8 on the Saturn, personally, I find this level to be a whole lot of fun. You've got the intense surfing bit, and then afterwards you have a small little platforming section involving the grapple hook, which is a nice little gimmick that's uh, included with one of the weapons. And it's not particularly difficult, but it's a great deal of fun. I love using grapple hooks in games, so I have a whale of a time. And the boss to the stage is this weird little whack-a-mole thing. There are four little slots at the top and they come down with various different machines which do different kind of attacks. And out of one of them is the boss. You have to use your ball in order to kick it and bounce up there. Now it's incredibly difficult to do. I find it involves a massive amount of luck. I've beaten the boss a few times and honestly I can't really work out where to stand in order to consistently hit him. I've not worked it out yet because there's no real clear spot to do it from. I imagine that with a lot more practice you can probably work out some uh, ideal places to stand in order to hit him more consistently. But, you know, even though it takes me a while to beat the boss, I still have a whale of a time. Now, the main thing that sets this apart above a lot of the other levels is not only do I find the gameplay for this part of the Wily Tower quite fun, but the music is just fantastic. The Wily Tower 1 stage is probably my favourite track in the game. The bass in it in particular is just so funky. It's 
really good, even when you're retrying those surfing sections again and again. The music is just fantastic and you don't get bored of it, or at least I don't. And for me, that's why it ranks in at number 9, which is a nice solid spot on my list. Coming at number 8, we have Aquaman Stage. Now, Aquaman Stage is the underwater level in the game. And the first thing that you'll notice when you enter the stage is just how beautiful it looks. You're on the beach and you see the shimmering water ahead of you while the beautiful tranquil music's playing. So you hop in and you start swimming around using the swimming mechanic that was introduced in the introduction stage. And it's as fun as you'd imagine. You start swimming around, you have to avoid spikes, you beat enemies, and there's some neat little puzzles there. If you have the Astro Crush as well, you have access to some extra bolts, and what it does is it actually raises the water level too. So you have access to some different areas. There's also a section where you fall down and use like the, uh, the grenade platforms that have got time detonations. And in the middle of the stage, you fight this strange robot fish as you fall down a waterfall and there are branches and things that you can stand on momentarily in order to fire off shots at, at the boss. The boss goes in and out of the waterfall and pops up. It's possibly one of the hardest sub-bosses in the game but it's still quite a fun fight just because of the situation you're in falling down and trying to get off your shots at this robot fish and it's a whole lot of fun. Once you beat that, you've got like another underwater section with some underwater caves that you need to traverse and you finally fight Aquaman. Now Aquaman is such an amazing robot master. He's like this chubby little water robot thing. He starts off by using his water to spray a rainbow that spells his name. And then he starts doing like these kind of dance poses as he starts spraying his water around and his attacks. Uh, if you have his weakness weapon, which is the Astro Crush, it takes him down quite quickly because when he gets hit by the Astro Crush, he falls on his back and you can hit him a few more times. Uh, however, the boss is just so well designed and I find him absolutely amazing in design that you know, it, it's still a standout of the stage, even if he's quite an easy boss to defeat. And that's why it's at number 8. So that's the first half of my Mega Man 8 levels list. Next week I'll be covering the top 7 stages in Mega Man 8. As I mentioned before, even though this is the bottom half of my list, I actually enjoy all the stages in the game. Aren't necessarily the worst 7 levels, it's just that the next seven in my list, I like a lot more. Uh, okay, well, what are your opinion on the seven I've covered so far? Do you like them? Do you disagree with my order? Tell me what you think. And hopefully you'll tune in next time for my top seven stages in Mega Man 8. Bye!